Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Cool Vision. In this video, we're gonna visit Cambodia. Cambodia is not the most talked about country in the world, and before coming here, I didn't know much about it, except for the fact that it's hot and humid, and has a lot of ancient temples. But Cambodia is much more than that. White sand beaches, bustling cities, huge night markets, delicious food, and friendly people. Today, Cambodia has a population of 17 million people. Buddhism is enshrined in the constitution as the official state religion and is practiced by more than 97% of the population. Over the last 20 years, the country has come a long way. Infrastructure has improved greatly. Tourism is on the rise and the number of hotels has doubled since 2010. So, let's start. Where is Cambodia? The country is located in the southern portion of the Indo-Chinese Peninsula in Southeast Asia, bordered by Thailand to the northwest, Laos to the north, Vietnam to the east, and the Gulf of Thailand to the southwest. Let's take a look at the major cities first. The capital and the largest city of Cambodia is Phnom Penh. Today it's a huge metropolis. Welcome to Phnom Penh, the largest city in Cambodia. It has a population of over 2.2 million people. The capital offers cultural and historical attractions, the biggest of which is the Royal Palace. Of course, the first and the most obvious place to start your introduction to Phnom Penh is the Royal Palace. It's been occupied by Cambodian monarchs since it was built in 1866. To the left of me is the king's residence. And when the blue flag is flying, that means the king is here. It's a complex of gorgeous buildings, the most impressive of which is the Silver Pagoda. It got its name because its floor is covered with five tons of gleaming silver. Around the city, you can use tuk-tuks, taxis, or even cyclos. That's a fun way to explore the city for tourists. Okay guys, so one of the ways to get around town is on a cyclo. This is fantastic. A guy is just, you know, riding a bicycle. I got a little bit of a complaint, it's too slow. But what can you do, right? Oh, where you going, guys? Within walking distance from the Royal Palace, you can visit the National Museum of Cambodia. It was opened in the 1920s and it, it's the largest cultural history museum in Cambodia. It has a collection of more than 14,000 items dating from prehistoric times all the way to the Khmer Empire. This building is an impressive red sandstone structure and was inaugurated during the French colonial period. French colonial? Yes, from 1863, Cambodia became a protectorate of France and gained independence only in 1953, being occupied by Japan during the Second World War. A popular evening time location is Sisawath Key, a three kilometer long boulevard located along the intersection of Tonle Sap and Mekong rivers. This is a very busy area at night with a row of boutiques, bars, cafes, restaurants, and luxury hotels. In the evening, you can take a river cruise and enjoy the city lights. Hello. Cambodia has undergone a genocide from 1975 till 1979 when Khmer Rouge or a communist party backed by the North Vietnamese army and the Chinese Communist Party came to power and killed a third of the country's population. To learn more about it you can visit Chon Ek, the site of a former mass grave also known as the Killing Fields. Another site to visit related to that era is S21 Prison, also known as Tool Slang Genocide Museum. It's a former secondary school that was used as a security prison in 21. Coming to think of this, it wasn't really that long ago, just some 40 years ago. If you want to learn more about this, you can watch the movie First They Killed My Father, directed by Angelina Jolie. Today, Phnom Penh is a bustling metropolis filled with motorbikes and cars similar to Bangkok. The skyline of the city is changing fast. Rooftop bars and skyscrapers, all of that did not exist some 20 years ago. For example, these are the skyscrapers on Diamond Island, which is one of the districts of Phnom Penh. This land was a swamp until the year 2000. There are lots of expats living in the Cambodian capital, like David and Masha. Let's see what they have to say. Before we worked as English teachers, um, teaching English as a foreign language, and Cambodia represented uh, our first opportunity to teach in an international school. Cambodia is one of the places where people who are not native speakers of English can also work in the international setting. So what kind of challenges did you guys run into? Most of the day it's too hot to be outside and 
Um, we only had a couple of nice months uh, in December, I think December and January, the temperatures dropped and it was pretty nice to be outside, even during the day, but most of the year the temperatures are 37 and... One of the other things that surprised us moving here is a lot of people describe Cambodia as a cheap place to live, which in essence it is. We were, I guess, somewhat surprised at how expensive some things were, particularly Western food. So it's trying to find that balance of is it worth the price or, you know, do I, do I miss that chocolate bar that much that I should pay <laughs> three dollars instead of one dollar for it? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what yeah. I'm thinking. Some of the most favored districts among expats are BBK1 and BBK2 and also the area around the Russian market. There's a nice party scene and no shortage of bars and clubs. Of course, markets are a huge part of the city life and you can visit Art Deco Central Market in the very heart of the city. And this is the Central Market, guys. The biggest market in Phnom Penh. There's a new modern neighborhood called Europark. That's a really nice neighborhood, guys. It's a modern residential area with look-alike individual houses, but what makes it stand out is a cool park in the middle with a river and replicas of famous European and international buildings like Big Ben and Sydney Opera. Fabulous. All right, it's All right, time man, to move on. How was I traveling in Cambodia? Right. Normally, I would rent a car, but in Cambodia, foreigners can only rent a car if they have a Cambodian driver's license. So I hired a driver, and that's him. I'm Moon. I'm driver. Hey! <laughs> this is how we're going to do it. From Phnom Penh, we're going to go to Siem Reap, Baden Bang, Sihanoukville, then take a ferry to Koron Island, then back to Sihanoukville, Kamport, and back to Phnom Penh. Ready? Let's go. The second largest city of Cambodia is Siem Reap. It has a population of 245,000 people. Siem Reap is a small town with a busy center with endless bars, restaurants, hotels and night markets. But that's not why people come here. What are you buying today? It's popular among tourists because of its majestic ancient temples. And specifically Angkor Wat, which they call the crown jewel of Cambodia. Angkor Wat is the largest religious monument in the world. Think about it. It's located on a site measuring 162 hectares, or 402 acres. Wow. Originally, it was constructed as a Hindu temple dedicated to the god Vishnu during the times of the Khmer Empire in the 12th century. The construction took 28 years. Towards the end of the 12th century, it was transformed into a Buddhist temple. The height is 65 meters, and no building in Siem Reap is allowed to be taller than that. Khmer Empire was the name for Cambodia back in 802 AD when Jayavarman II, a Khmer prince, founded and became the ruler of Khmer Empire, which flourished for 600 years. They'll offer you to go see it at sunrise or the sunset. And I think sunset is a better deal. Sunrise for me was miserable. Waking up at 4.30 in the morning to be there at 5, only to sit there for an hour and a half, falling asleep sweating because it's already hot and humid, only to realize that sunrises are not as reliable as sunsets. Angkor Wat is just one of approximately 50 Buddhist and Hindu temples in the area. Besides Angkor Wat, you can visit many other temples like Tapran Temple, that's been nicknamed Tomb Raider Temple, due to its depiction in the film Lara Croft, Tomb Raider from 2001. Bayon Temple, that's famous for its 216 stone carved faces on the temple's towers. Priyahan Temple, Priyarap Temple, Nikpon Temple and many others. A pass for three days will cost you around $60. But it's not for everyone, let me tell you. I was exhausted after two days of visiting temples. In the evening you can visit one of the city's Apsara dance performances that comes with the dinner. I loved it. Traditional dancing and fighting, good music and good food. CM Reap has a pub street with discos and bars, but nothing as crazy as in some Thai cities. Our friend L, who's an American, has lived here for 10 years now, and he seems to be enjoying it. I think it's time to try some Cambodian food. Cambodia's signature dish is lok lak. It's 
wok fried filet of beef that comes with oyster gravy and compote pepper. And it also comes with an egg and with some rice. How much was it? It's six seventy-five. Yeah. Funny thing is, uh, you get prices in U.S. dollars, but you can pay in either currency, in the local currency or in, in American dollars, which makes it very convenient. Fish hammock is another popular dish, and this is what it looks like. Stick around, because later in the video, we're going to be trying some crazy Cambodian street food. Cambodia is famous for its fishing villages, so we visited one. The village out this way is called Chong Kanias, and um, on the Tonle Sap Lake, you have roughly a million families that are living in floating houses um, out on the lake. But in the wet season, this all floods. Everything you see here floods. Tonle Sap Lake is just 30 minutes away from Siem Reap. It is the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. So guys, I've kind of been missing Europe, so we are in Venice right now. Houses standing on this water, it's like a canal. People stay busy in the small houses. I say the conditions are not the best, but somehow they try to make, they try to decorate the houses. I love that. A lot of people put flowers on top. And, um, and, it, and it seems like a pretty friendly community. That, that's my impression. Are you cooking rice? <laughs> Ian. 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 Ian means shy. Oh. All right, moving on. Now let's drive to the third largest city in Cambodia, and that is Batambang. The population today is 119,000 people. The city was founded in the 11th century, and it lies along the Sunke River, a tranquil small body of water. Batambang is often overlooked. Sure, it doesn't have wide sand beaches, big city nightlife or big name temples like Angkor Wat, but at the same time it offers a laid-back vibe, it's affordable and it doesn't have heavy traffic or crowds of tourists. The central point in Batambang is Central Market, called Pasar Nat, built in the 1930s. This old part of town around the market is enjoyable to explore on foot. Lots of coffee shops, hotels and French colonial architecture. Take the time to explore the back streets too. Okay, I'm now walking the back streets of Batambon, and it's just so interesting. Toss it There's a rat, guys. There it is. I'm gonna get it now. Look at this rat. What you got? What you got? One of the most famous colonial buildings is Salah Hayat, the former governor's residence. Okay guys, let's go visit Batamon National Museum. Follow me. Now it's a museum with artifacts from local Khmer temples. North of the center you'll find the ruins of Ek Nong, an 11th century pagoda with sandstone carvings and a huge statue of Buddha next to it. Impressive? Very much indeed. Another fascinating temple in the area is Wat Benan. And it was built in the 11th century under King Udayadit Yabarman II. But in order to see it, we'll have to climb a lot of stairs. You guys ready? Let's go for it. It's a mountaintop mid 11th century ruin consisting of five towers arranged in a quincunx form, reminiscent of Angkor Wat. It takes about 20 minutes to climb it, but the view is worth it. Batambang province has always been the leading rice producing region of the country. We were visiting Batambang at the time of the preparation for the Cambodian New Year. Oh, she fell. <laughs> Mom, tell me what's going on. So he is the boss. He's the boss. He stay in the middle. Right. He stay in the middle, and then he he tied the he tied the tree. Yeah, you look. Yeah. Okay, and then done. He ran away. He ran away. He he swim. Okay. It's a three-day public holiday that starts on the 13th or 14th of April, which is the end of the harvesting season when farmers enjoy the fruits of their labor before the rainy season begins. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Baden Bon, just great impression of the city. I love how friendly people are and I love the celebration getting ready for the Kwai New Year, which is going to be tomorrow. Some of the cool things to do outside the city is visiting the Bat Caves, called Bat Cave of Phnom Sampol. Wow, what you guys just saw was 15 million bats live in that cave creating such a wonderful natural performance and they actually do that every single night and people come to see it of course so 15 million of those bats just live in the cave looking for food they're going out to hunt the bats start flying around 6 p.m. they're heading to the rice paddies looking for mosquitoes to feed on on the other side of the mountain you can visit another side of Khmer Rouge atrocities the Killin cave you'll have to hire a motorbike to take you there Khmer Rouge used this cave to dump the bodies of the people they executed. When I was going to the cave, it was really dark, which added to the horror. A sad place. You better come earlier, around 4 p.m., so you can watch the bad caves afterwards before it gets too dark. You cannot visit Batambang Bang without taking a ride on Bamboo Train, or Nori, as the locals call it. It's essentially a bamboo flatbed on wheels, powered by a small motorcycle engine. Okay guys, hope you hear me well. I'm going to take you on a short ride on a bamboo train, and that's something you should be doing when you are in Batam Bang. It's a nice way to see a little bit of the countryside, while having the wind in your face. <laughs> Hello, little man. How's it going? How's it going? Now, let's travel to the coastal city of Sihanoukville, also known as Kampon Som. We took an expressway, the first one in the country that was finished in 2022 by a Chinese company. It was Mon's first time driving on an expressway. It was fun seeing his reaction. The max speed was 120, but he was doing 90, being extra cautious. And finally, we are in Sihanoukville. The population of the city is 73,000 people. The city is flanked by an almost uninterrupted string of beaches along its entire coastline and coastal marshlands. The local economy is largely defined by its deep water port, the nearby oil terminal and gambling. It used to be a sleepy coastal city with pristine beaches, but over the last 10 years has seen an unprecedented construction boom, mainly from the Chinese developers. Welcome to China, Mon. <laughs> I don't recommend gambling because most likely you're not gonna win. You know, you're looking at flashy cars like this, a McLaren, but I'll tell you, it's probably the owner of a casino, not a gambler. Everywhere you look, there's gonna be a Chinese sign. So they're building mostly casinos, they're building resorts, they're building everything. But honestly, I think this, the, the city is losing its identity. It's becoming another like, concrete jungle type of city. Not too good. The city has been flooded with casinos in an attempt to turn it into a gambling mecca, rivaling Macau and Las Vegas. Unfortunately, Sihanoukville's original charm has completely disappeared. Now it's just another concrete jungle with casinos and high-rises. The massive influx of Chinese capital was accompanied by a wave of Chinese tourists, businessmen, workers, and even Chinese organized crime. Crime rates went up and all that comes with it, drunken fights, prostitution, and kidnappings. Massive demand for land has caused prices to skyrocket, and as a result, most poor and lower income Cambodians have been priced out of their homes and neighborhoods. Funny thing is that Cambodian nationals are not even allowed to gamble, so all these casinos are for foreigners. This is just insane, guys. It's like casino after casino. Wow. It was getting ridiculous to a point that in 2019, around 200,000 Chinese citizens lived in the city. And then Cambodia decided to ban online gambling, which was then followed by COVID. And so the majority of the Chinese nationals had to go back. On the bright side, the city has a lawn shoreline area, home to a number of beach resorts. For a quieter beach experience, go further away from the city to a place like Otres Beach, that's a really nice area. 
Oh, I think our breakfast has arrived. Locals call the city Senewil. My friend Moin really enjoys it here. Well, let's enjoy our breakfast. But many people are coming to Sihanoukville only to take a ferry to one of the nearby islands for a tropical paradise experience. When you think of Cambodia, you don't typically think of white sand beaches and blue waters, but Cambodia has surprisingly some of the most astonishing beaches in the world. Okay guys, welcome to tropical paradise in Cambodia. Let's take a look at Koh Rong Island because this is where I was staying. The ferry will take you to Koh Rong Community Pier. And let me tell you, unless you're a party person, this is not where you want to be staying. And I also heard that there might be some sewage contamination problem on the main beach. There are over 20 beaches to choose from. The island is pretty big, 78 square kilometers. So better choose one of those secluded ones like Coconut Beach, this is what it looks like, or Sock Sand Beach. Look, picture perfect, this is where I was staying. The scenery is breathtaking. There are no cars on the island, only motorbikes and taxi boats. But the island is not entirely developed. Make sure the hotel you pick has air conditioning, if that's important to you. I was staying at a hotel that had a high rating, but didn't have it, and it was terrible. Also, the amount of bugs will probably surprise you. I had to kill two spiders in my room. Yes, just like that one, the size of my palm. Funny thing is, when I complained about the spiders to the owner of the hotel, he just said, you don't like it, you kill it. So, while it is a tropical paradise, it's not for everyone. I love a little bit of civilization, it turns out. Needless to say, I didn't get much sleep that night. And to make matters worse, I fell off a motorbike the next day. Now, this is what I call a real adventure. This is my first time on this island. I got the scooter, and I'm just exploring it, going from one beach to another. I was having a great time when suddenly the concrete road came to an end, and the gravel road appeared instead. So I decided to slow down and went too hard on the front brakes. And there I was recovering at a local emergency place. Well, what can you do? Don't go too fast. By the way, motorbike accidents is one of the leading causes of deaths and injuries in Cambodia. So please be extra cautious. And the last city that we're gonna cover is the city of Kampot. The road to Kampot was one of the worst ones on the trip. There was an option to take that newly built Chinese toll road, but we decided to take the standard one. This is a terrible road. It was just like this for a couple hours. And also my friend said, you can complain about it, but what's gonna happen is you'll be taken to jail 20 minutes after you complain. The road doesn't look too bad after this. And finally, we're in the laid-back river town of Kampot. It's a small town with a population of 32,000 people. Kampot's charm lies in the exceedingly chilled out atmosphere. Many buildings date from the colonial time. The riverside promenade is graced by a surprising concentration of Western-owned bars and guest houses. Durian Roundabout is the most recognized place in the city. Why Durian? Because Kampot was a durian heaven from the early 1940s on until the Khmer Rouge came to power and burned all the durian orchards, turning them into rice paddies and murdering their wealthy owners. We were visiting during the celebration of the Cambodian New Year, and everybody was partying and having water gun fights. And not just water guns, they were splashing each other with buckets of water. Brutal, merciless, but looks like a ton of fun. The city is going crazy, and you know why? Because it's a Khmer New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. So what do people do for fun? They're splashing each other. They're having water gun fights and they turn the whole city into a water park. I would have loved to join them and get soaking wet if it hadn't been for my wounds from the accident. Another cool place in the city is Antono Slide River Park. This is where you can relax and enjoy your food by the water, listen to some live music, or rent a boat. The city is surrounded by salt fields and pepper farms. This is what the salt fields look like. The way it works is, 
The seawater is allowed into salt ponds, and when it evaporates, salt crystals are left behind and harvested. Another thing I highly recommend is a visit to a pepper farm. There's a number of them in the area, but La Plantation is the biggest one. From the drone, you can appreciate the vibrant colors of pepper, flowers, and exotic fruit plantations. Fantastic! It's an incredible area to visit. You can join a free tour, at the end of which you can try all the different varieties of peppers. The best one is the fresh one, but the fresh one you can't preserve it. So you can't export, it's only in Cambodia. If you want to export it, we will taste at the end, it's dehydrated or salty. So how many people working on the farm at this moment? Here we have between 150 and 250 farmers with us. Uh, during the harvest season it can reach 300 people. One more thing the city of Kampot is famous for is Bokor National Park. The park is located in the Dumre Mountains at over 1,000 meters above sea level. The drive up the mountain was fun. You'll see cute monkeys on the road. You just told me that people used to eat monkeys some 20 years ago, right? Yes. Wow, but they don't do it now. No, go to jail. Not too long. Right, but it was mostly people who live in the jungle, right? Yes. Okay. There's a 29 meter tall monument to Lokye Mao, an ancient mythical heroine, the protector of travelers and hunters. This national park used to be a holiday destination during the French colonial rule. There's an old Catholic church built in 1928 and a Buddhist temple from 1924. It's situated on the edge of the Bakor mountaintop. What a gorgeous location! There's even an old French casino sitting on the side of a cliff. Fascinating! But a cliff next to a casino? Sounds like a bad idea. The winner takes it all and the loser trips and falls. Today, however, the park is being destroyed. They recently built this huge resort, a monstrous Chinese casino that looks like straight out of a horror movie. You know, it's so weird to find a casino in the national park and I think it has no place here. Like, what's the point? Why would you come here to gamble? You're here to enjoy nature and kind of be away from the city. But it is what it is. There's a casino. I think the building looks kind of ugly. It has no architectural style. It's just a big concrete building. What is it doing in a national park? There's only one explanation, and that is corruption. There's numerous unfinished hotels and resorts, and they keep building more and more, just like those Chinese ghost cities that stay empty. The whole place is starting to feel like a ghost town. Pretty sad to see a national park being sold off and developed for pure commercial gain. Come on. <laughs> the local expert. Yes. <laughs> All right, so far we've mostly been covering cities, but exploring rural Cambodia is a whole other experience, let me tell you. Once we stayed for the night in a Cambodian village, where we met a lot of friendly locals and even crashed a housewarming party, this is what it looks like. What's it like for a tourist in Cambodia? First of all, it's very affordable and they take US dollars, which is very convenient. Cheers! Cheers, bye! They actually prefer dollars in many places. I think it's a good idea to bring a lot of cash with you because I didn't really enjoy paying 2.5% commission every time I had to withdraw some cash from the local ATMs. As far as public transport goes, you can use tuk-tuks or you can use apps like Grab and Pass App. What about food? I've already mentioned lock lak and fish amok, but there are many different dishes to try. Street food is extremely popular. You'll find huge night markets in every major city where you can try anything from seafood to insects. For example, this is a night market in Siem Reap. Most people in rural areas eat very simple food. Yeah, this is very typical countryside Cambodian breakfast or lunch. We have some fried pork, okay. uh, some fried fish, and then we have cabbage and cucumbers, some yeah. fresh, fresh vegetables, and then of course rice. Of course you gotta have rice. Absolutely. Rice. Cambodians will eat some of the most unusual food, like insects. 
or even spiders. There is even a location between Phnom Penh and Siem Reap that's been nicknamed Spiderville. One of the craziest things you can try in Cambodia, the spider. Trying a spider wasn't something I was ready for, but I did try some insects. That was too easy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too bad, it's good actually. It's a silkworm. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is disgusting. Did you try this one? No, I can't. Of course, you can get all the tropical fruit that you normally find in Southeast Asia, and even some local fruits okay, that you probably never heard of before, like kui fruit. fruit it's growing in the fruit. jungle. And it's only available in April and May, so I was lucky. It's really delicious, sweet and sour, I love it. Something I like about Cambodians is that they're very peaceful and friendly. Road rage that you find in many countries doesn't exist here. My driver Mon said that no one ever starts fighting on the road. They just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They, n there's no such thing as road rage here. No. Like if someone does something stupid, most likely they're gonna apologize, say just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it's never gonna result in them fighting each other on the road. No, usually not. Even when people honk their horn, in America we honk our horn to say like, screw you, I hate you. People honk their horn here is more of a polite thing. I'm coming up behind you, I'm going a lot faster. Beep, beep, I'm coming, I'm gonna yeah, pass you. Yeah. Um, but I think people, generally speaking, just kind of have a, more of a tolerance for just kind of saying kind of like what i was just saying it is what it is like if someone cuts you off getting pissed off at it like we do in america is not going to make it any better it's just like it happened and you can either get pissed off at it which nothing will happen or you can just say it happened and move on with it right that's certainly one of the things we can learn from the cambodians absolutely definitely when it comes to economy cambodia is still a poor country Rice, fish, timber, and rubber are Cambodia's major exports. Nominal GDP per capita is $1,900 a year, which is four times smaller than in neighboring Thailand, and 42 times smaller than in the US. Can foreigners buy real estate in Cambodia? Yes, as long as it's not on the ground floor. So you cannot buy land, but you can buy a condo on the fifth floor, for example. What about politics? Cambodia's political system has been dominated by Prime Minister Hun Sen and the Cambodian People's Party for more than three decades. This guy has been accused of assuming highly centralized power in the country and considerable personal wealth using violence and corruption. Sounds like a great politician. Cambodia has a major problem with landmines, especially in rural areas. This is the legacy of three decades of war that has taken a severe toll on the Cambodians. Currently, there are 40,000 amputees in the country. My friend Al and I visited Peace Museum of Mine Action near Siem Reap, a great place to learn the history of Cambodia and modern machines that they use to disarm mines. That's a huge naval mine from the USSR. So let's wrap it up. I really enjoyed my stay in Cambodia. The country turned out to be more developed than I expected. The tourist infrastructure is great and most importantly I felt safe throughout the trip and the locals were super friendly. <laughs> One thing to note though, I was visiting in April and let me tell you, this is not the best time to come to the country. It was way too hot, 37, 39 degrees every day. Wow. So there you have it, come visit Cambodia. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Stay tuned.